everybody and welcome back to esports chat number nine um it has been a minute i'm excited to be back and i have a new guest adam fitch the editor at esports insider uh so hi <laughs> Has... It's not really too exciting, is it, for people? No, I, I personally think it is because we talked about it briefly before this. We actually first kind of interacted, I wouldn't say necessarily on the most positive terms. We did not agree on a topic, on a story that I published. Mm -hmm. um, and something for me that I don't see often in esports is people having debates on different things, especially on podcast form. Um, I mean, I see things yeah. on Twitter back and forth, um, Richard Lewis and Slasher, but for smaller journalists like us, I don't feel like, um, many of us feel like we have the voice to speak up about certain things. Um, and who knows if we get on this podcast, you and I, Adam, and we debate and it creates a discussion. I think that's a good thing. Um, yeah, well, I doubt, well, I doubt that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you want, um, you can give everybody a line or two or whatever um, about what you do. Um, go ahead. We can try. Right, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm the editor of Esports Insider, but I still very much um, want to be a journalist. I'm more so editor. I guess you t tend to um, take a bit of a back step and help other people shine. But I'm trying to do that, but also I'm very much pushing, uh, pushing forward in, in my own avenue as well. So I'm... I cover um, the business and industry, industry side of esports, and I, um, I don't think too many people do that, so it is uh, a, a, um, an opportunity for me to kind of put myself out there and uh, shed some light on a kind of, I wouldn't say it's to do, taboo, but not many people engage in it as, as much as they do with the game side of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you actually published an article today um, about the partnership with... Uh... Uh, was it Atlanta Esports Ventures and FaZe Clan? Um, and again, yeah. I didn't really see any other articles out there speaking about that specific partnership. So that was interesting no. for you to, you know, bring that to light. Well, I, I didn't even see anybody really tweet about it besides replying to my tweet when, when I kind of questioned how they can have FaZe in their name when mm -hmm. the brands are supposed to be exclusive. Yeah. So I thought, well, no, nobody else is going to do it. So I will try, and uh, it was quite difficult to get hold of them and to actually get any sort of uh, definitive answers. But once I spoke to Paul Hamilton, who's the CEO of AEV, he actually told me that bit. I kind of dodged some other answers, so there's still some more digging to do around how they can actually use FaZe, because I don't know if it's based on the technicality between FaZe and FaZe Clan being different, or, yeah. or what it is. So it's just trying to get some answers to, to things that I think are in um, like the interest of, of of people in esports and fans as well um mm -hmm. especially on the bits where people don't really care or even think about it yeah absolutely um and I, from what i believed in the beginning was that there was to be absolutely no legacy names in the cdl which is why teams like 100 thieves elected not to join um so it's interesting to see phase and optic both be able to use their names but you know, I feel like your article might start to chip away, but obviously they were very close-lipped on a couple things, like how it even started. They just said, a mutual friend. Yeah, uh, of, of course, and I, I understand that they can't tell us everything, and, and yeah. um, they have to be very coy about certain things. But, I mean, if you don't ask the questions, then you're not going to get anything at all. So I, I, it's not the kind of thing I'll drop. I will um, be a complete nuisance to them until we get everything we need to know. I'll, just so... Just so I guess like teams going forward, if there's like expansion teams for season two of CDL, for example, yeah. uh, so they know what they can do because uh, Heretics wanted to get in and, and they didn't get accepted, but perhaps they didn't know they could partner with another team that had got accepted, uh, if, if that is indeed something you can do. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I, I'm kind of trying to take into account the entire scope of how this can affect things. It doesn't just enlighten fans, but it can really help team owners and affect their, them getting into the league and therefore the league's well uh, health health and everything as well you know so it's it's a big deal for me and i don't really see too many people talking about it um and that and that's just kind of what i'm trying to do just ship away at these little little bits and bobs yeah um that absolutely i mean that's the thing with esports is that i mean it's relatively new it's still new and there's new things forming um from what i believe that partnership is something that the industry has never seen before um i don't know if there's i can't recall of anything else yeah i don't I, 
Yeah, I, r I really can't think of anything. So it's going to be interesting to see if more of that forms, especially with you saying um, year two, um, if the CDL expands to more teams. Um, but one of the biggest things this week so far, even though it's only Wednesday, God forbid. Um, Kurt, goes on. I know, man, it's, it's insane. We live in a crazy, crazy world um, and an industry that moves a mile a minute. Um, but Courage signing exclusivity to um, YouTube this week. And everybody believed that it was going to be Mixer. Yeah. Um, and it seems like 2020 is going to be the year of Stream Wars. The year of Twitch versus Mixer versus YouTube. Um, with us being in the esports, um, what do you think that means for us? Anything going to change or is it just going to be the same? There's bound to be some changes. I, I, when when kind of Ninja, uh, Ninja moved to Mixer, my first thought was, how is this going to actually affect esports? Because he's kind of esports, I guess, when he competes, but yeah. overall it's more on the entertainment side. So I guess the natural thing to think of is, is two things. So is the event side of things. We've seen um, like ESL go to Facebook and, and stuff like that before, and it wasn't very popular. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's is gonna is gonna be a big war there as to who can get say the rights to the ESL Pro Tour, which is like 20 ESL and DreamHack CSGO events, for example. If YouTube could grab those and provide a good experience, then perhaps other events would follow over as well. But then there's also team-specific um, rights as well. So I think um, Na'Vi, I signed with Caffeine, for example, Yeah. Uh, which happened, I think, mid this year, something like that. Yeah, I, I believe Dignitas see... is with them as well. Oh, there we go. I, I could see that happening as well. So uh, platforms trying to sign like popular teams. So say your fanatics and your hundred thieves. Say if mm -hmm. all of hundred thieves were on YouTube, then uh, as a kind of that, another kind of grapple to exactly there's another grapple there that mm -hmm. I think is coming that we've not seen quite yet. Um, and that's what I'm more interested in rather than individual streamers and such. I, I try to just focus on the esports side really mm -hmm. because there's just there's too much going on to think about anything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Courage, he obviously worked with the Call of Duty League. Nate Shot obviously was a Call of Duty player. They have their yeah. connection with Twiz, so that actually wouldn't be too far off. That would be, that would break the internet, I would think, and it would set a whole new precedent, but... Well, we saw, we saw Nate Shot with MLG TV back in the day as well, so we know he's not afraid to do, to no, do something a, no, bit, a bit wild. Yeah, he's already said, he's like... Not necessarily sell out, but I mean, hey, if something's going to guarantee your future, and it's not just his future now, he has a whole team behind him. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah. You go for it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And Slasher's already said, um, majority <laughs> of his cl of the clients over at Loaded, um, yeah. they're in conversations, either uh, staying with Mixer, or sorry, staying with Twitch, or they're going to different platforms, whether it be YouTube or Mixer. Loaded, uh, I hate to say it, but they're loaded. They have a huge <laughs> list of clients. They have Summit. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go to their website right now just to like bring up a few. But like, they have so many clients. And for as long as I can remember, I'm going to say definitely within the past four years, Twitch has been the place. There hasn't no, been no. a competitor. No, um, no exa exactly. Well, we've got, so <clears throat> I guess Disney now own caffeine right because they acquired a lot of fox's properties so if we've got disney versus google versus i assume apple is going to come into it at some point you know what i mean versus microsoft then it's just a battle of who's going to chuck more money at people i think <laughs> to be honest and loaded and his clients will win yeah um there's so many different agencies out there that mm -hmm. i mean i'm happy that you know these um, personalities and esports players even then that they have representation behind them because it cool. avoids any issues that we've had to deal with before in esports or whatever but now like this is it, it's truly becoming huge these people are signing for I'm, I'm gonna assume millions of dollars that's you know yeah. securing their entire future and their family's future and we all thought it was Ninja who was acquiring these numbers, and now with these deals, it, it, possibilities are endless. It's it's crazy how fast everything's moving. Of course, and we've, now we've just got to see who's willing to pay for us to go over to their platform. Yeah, exactly. I and think that's the next step. That should we go for micro influencers, not not the big names? Just yeah. give me like. 
five hundred dollars a month or something. I'll I'll come stream on YouTube, you know. Yeah, I was talking to somebody. I don't I don't remember who it was, but Facebook, I believe, had that initiative where they were picking up a couple of the smaller streamers and okay. they were going, hey, like we're gonna guarantee you, you know, a monthly salary, but you come stream with us. But okay. unfortunately, for YouTube anyway, they've been in some issues with analytic buffing and things like that. So. Um, Sounds about right. Their their public <laughs> their public face isn't the best right now, but also YouTube streaming is not known for gaming. Um, the PUBG, um, uh, their tournament that they tried to go through the uh, what was it the H one League I believe it was. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. They they tried to do Facebook and the numbers were horrible and they picked a horrible time for it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Well, I couldn't even access VODs properly. I went onto the um, the Facebook page as the event was going on. I think it was towards the back end of it. Yeah. And um, the, the way they had arranged it, it was awful. There was individual games, but then there were also groups of games sometimes per day, and it was just all over the place, and you couldn't really go back and watch it oh, wow. uh, systematically at all. It, it was a mess from uh, from start to finish. And, and when you've got, like, Twitch, which is already pretty pretty good, it's, yeah. it's hard to, to think... Uh, uh, being in a like a league or a tournament that you go anywhere else, but I mean, uh, so uh, there's definitely some catching up that needs to be done by like the, the likes of YouTube, mm -hmm. I'd say, in in terms of that stuff. Yeah, um, I believe uh, Fwiz already said that YouTube's already putting more development resources behind their live streaming and for events and things like that. Um, okay. Like in America, YouTube TV actually um, they broadcast like huge traditional sporting events like. Uh, baseball and things like that um so maybe they can use some of those resources um but who knows uh, right now it's essentially an open field um it's there's a lot to be developed and we're going into a completely new year so the announcements might slow down until like january yeah it's it's, it's hard to know exactly where we are with things but i imagine we're right at the beginning and, and what seem like big deals now will be absolutely nothing compared to like this time next year mm -hmm. uh but we're not, i don't know will there be another platform that comes in and, and just blows millions and millions straight away to secure some people and, and that's already got they nicked like twitch's best bits and youtube's best bits and mixer's best bits I, we have no idea what's going to go on it's the same with like new games coming into esports as well. Like you, you actually have no idea when you saw like uh, Fortnite and Apex Legends come in and take over instantly. Yeah, it just reminds me of how volatile both gaming and esports can be. Yeah, absolutely. And as somebody, I like, I really enjoyed Apex. I still play it, but it was just too slow. And it, it, its jump off was crazy. It was insane, but the answer was too slow. I feel like. Well, I don't. Well, that's it's like um, I call it like the post Fortnite climate, where now you have to update one once every like one or two weeks, or else your your player base is going to get bored, and because they're all kind of entitled now and think, oh, we deserve something every week. It needs to be fresh all the time. Whereas like a Call of Duty back in the day, you maybe get a DLC map uh, map pack like once every maps. three four months. Yeah, yeah <laughs> if if that, I think there was one map pack for Call of Duty Four, and it had four maps in. They were not too good. Mm -hmm. um, but that was exciting. It's like right, we're uh, reinvigorated to play the game and such. Now it's like we need an update every week. You need to blow up the map and all this kind of stuff. It, it's crazy. I think Fortnite's kind of ushered a big change in in gaming. Yeah, it's it's definitely changed the atmosphere for gamers everywhere. Video, like I was talking about it with some of my like real life friends, and gaming just doesn't feel the same anymore as to when I'm gonna say even five, ten years ago. Like is that because you're old? Probably, honestly, I'm just cynical and I hate it's everything. It's the same for me now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly the same. Like, I play COD for 20 minutes. I'm done. Like back in the day, I used to. Uh, I think we have, so in in England we have like six weeks holidays mm. in between like school years, and I left my house like four times during that. Like when I was maybe 13, 14, because I was that obsessed with gaming. Oh, it and was. Now I, I can't yeah. play for long at all. Yeah, it was horrible. Jaded. Yeah, like when I was younger, especially like with Call of Duty. Call of Duty like was my game. I would put hundreds of hours into each game. And now mm -hmm. with the new one, I think I've put maybe six hours into it, and I'm like, I'm bored. <laughs> it's exactly, it's yeah. it's so it's bad. It, I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the games, but um, yeah, both. probably probably. But actually, segues into the next topic. Um, I have been a huge fan of Call of Duty. I'm probably going to love it until I die, which means uh, Call of Duty League. 
Um, all of the brands are revealed. We have everything. Yeah. Um, you don't sound too happy. Uh, it's just, perhaps it was always going to be underwhelming, but it, it, it was very much underwhelming. And I don't think that's because um, things were leaked ahead of time. I think it's just the, the, the brands just aren't anything too exciting for the most part, mm. really. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, I feel like everybody agrees with you. Um, the only brand that, on it, like, I'm looking at it now um, through the website, and the only brand that truly makes me go, wow, that looks really clean, is Empire. But even then, it doesn't blow me away, like, say, Outlaws. Outlaws branding. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that's universally the best branding. Um, I, it would be a stretch to say ever in esports, but it's it's... It's, it's all there, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, it, it's definitely up there. Um, I, I don't yeah, know. Look at the sorry, but look at the Atlanta phase line, designed by Temper himself. Yeah. Like it, it is absolutely fucking shocking, and I've not seen anybody say anything about it. I've just been kind of sat there in silence, just like, am I am I mad? I must be mad because it is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, like, it's I don't... so basic, and it stands out, but in a really bad way. And I think the reason for that is because they wanted their, like, the actual FaZe logo, but it doesn't, it, it's not the FaZe logo, because it doesn't no. have that line at the end of it. I don't know how to explain it. I, I assume it can't be the same. Yeah, I, I don't know if that, if it's a branding thing, or if it's because it's a whole new entity, they could, like, I, I don't know, but, um, Subliner is feels like it's, I'm uh, going to get epilepsy okay. from it. <laughs> and, they're, and they're my whole I team. Like, I like subliners. Uh, hey, you know what? I, I, it feels football. And by that, I mean American soccer. Okay. Um, yeah. American soccer, so yeah, football. Yeah. <laughs> we'll <laughs> but, just call it football. Yeah, but I don't know. Again, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. That's probably more of an opinion thing. Well, everyone hated NYXL until maybe like a, a stage in the Overwatch True. League, and then it was like, oh, it's not too bad. It just kind of stands out, and they're trying to be edgy and cutting edge and all that kind of crap. And, and it's, it's Anbox, isn't it? And you've seen their branding. And I, I can appreciate. I think sorry, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Uh, I appreciate the continuity though, because if you compare the subliners to uh, what is it, NYXL, they both have mm -hmm. that interlocked. Uh, double color thing going on there. So, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I can see it. Uh, I mean, I've seen some people taking taking the mickey out of the name because it's made up. But, I mean, like, yeah. that's these brands have to be unique, right? Mm. You can't get more unique than making up your own word. This is true. And that's the other thing, too. There's so many different brands in New York that you're very limited. Oh, like, that, obviously, yeah. New York Empire would work, but I believe that was already copyrighted by somebody. Um... Is so, that not like a song by Alicia Keys or something? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you are absolutely right. It, nobody's going to be able to steal it if it's made up. There we go. So um, I, I will uh, defend that until my death. No, I you know what? I, NYSL's too bad. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, the one that confused me was the Los Angeles Gorillas. Um, it doesn't feel... The logo doesn't feel gorilla-y to me. It feels more stealthy, ninja... I, I don't have know. no idea what they're going for. Hashtag hoods up. <laughs> like, it's, I, I don't know. It's just like they thought oh, against Optic. Oh, we're not actually going to be able to beat Optic in any way. So let's just go so far left field and. There's a that... it just it just reads to people who don't know what they're doing. In my yeah. Opinion. Um. But that's the thing. I've also heard from sources that these teams didn't necessarily have completely free reign over designing these. Um, apparently there was an agency involved mm -hmm. to yes. help with this, so to say, to help develop these things, and teams had different say, but not too much. So, say, for instance, um, the Atlanta phase was like, hey, so I really don't like this. It looks like a triangle. Activision could come back and be like, we, we don't care what you think. This is staying. Mm -hmm. um, well, ultimately, they own the league and stuff, right? Yeah, so absolutely. They've, they've got the final say on things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd heard, but not, I hadn't confirmed, like um, four or five alternatives have been drummed up in the past, and it's up to the team to pick which one they want. So it's kind of like pre-approved options, yeah. roughly, maybe some tinkering around the edges, but like uh, the main gist of things uh, is, is kind of pre-decided. At least I heard that for uh, the beginning of Overwatch League. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I heard I that as well. I can't say about Call of Duty there. Yeah, I heard that as well, but again, it was just... 
I mean, at this point, everything's already out there, so it is what it is. Um, like, the Ultra is interesting, um, with including well, so I, the squirrel, squirrel sc Tilt the Squirrel, I think, is yeah, the dude's correct. name. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Um, the hashtag ha Ultra as fuck is a little cringe, but... I don't know how Activision is possibly going to allow that to go. I don't think oh, they, well, they did. They didn't. You're they right. Because <laughs> um, Looney had a player story, which is a rip-off of like a player's lobby thing, yeah. I believe. Right? Um, and it, yeah, it was for Looney, and they like photoshopped and bullied out the fuck part. Yeah, that's, the, that's right. Honey, so that's like, right, you did. Anyway, so. You're right, you did send that to me. That's Yeah, so, well, there you go. Guess that isn't going to work. They're going to ultra as blank, or they're going to bleep him out, whatever. <laughs> um, exactly yeah just just eradicate him and start again yeah i guess but yeah who, do you have any like top favorites we say like um, I'd, I'd say empire is an easy one mm -hmm. um especially it's got like the little envy in there as well which is a nice touch yeah kind of um paying tribute to the heritage of envy and cod since mm -hmm. he was like one of the founding orgs i believe so that that's cool and the way they rolled everything out felt actually prepared against like the london royal ravens where it definitely wasn't prepared that's that's the antithesis of what it was. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess I quite like the rocker actually. It feels quite sporty, like the logo itself. Yeah. And again, it's it's a name not many people are going to go for, and people don't like it now. But once you get used to just calling them rocker, um, I, I guess like the the accent on on the O's a tiny bit weird, and I don't yeah. know how they get around that in every aspect. They may just go for a normal normal thing, but. Mm -hmm. I quite that stands out to me quite a bit as well. And as I say, I quite like N NYSL. I'll be completely honest there. I, nobody will agree with me on that. <laughs> um, but they're the only ones that stand out to me. The rest are kind of even middle of the pack are absolutely disgusting. I, I must say. Yeah. Um. The only one that was interesting, like I personally don't like the logo for Mutineers, but their whole story, it, it it's it's interesting following the whole pirate davy jones locker type thing uh i mean it it's cute off. it's cute it's fun um but yeah there, there's really none of them that like stand out to me um however like besides that there's already been rivalries forming between teams um i saw True. two players go uh i don't want to say at each other but it was slasher and aches um they were okay, commenting yeah they were commenting back and forth and aches going back like hey go play for fake optic and that's been an argument ever since hex sold fake optic fake optic um uh yeah so it's definitely been interesting obviously you have crim with the whole uh issue i don't want to say issue but <laughs> that, that video is funny oh, oh, i man. actually think there's a three-way rivalry there if you think about it, I actually think there's Dallas Empire because of Krim, yeah. then the Chicago Huntsman because of Scum, mm -hmm. and I guess Formal, if you want to tie him in as well, actually. Yeah. And then there's obviously Dashi and, and Tej on Optic. I think it's a bit of a three-way thing now where there might be a little bit of bad blood now, or they can at least play up to the storylines of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's something Call of Duty's already always done well with, is having good storylines, so mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's good to see them forming before we even had a date for, for the league starting. Yeah, I mean, um, the only huge storyline that I've ever really remembered from Call of Duty, it, it's always been surrounded around Optic. Um, course, so yeah. now that we have, what is it, 12 teams now? Well, um, yeah, yeah th that's a lot of potential. Um, especially when hopefully. you... Yeah, exactly, hopefully. Um, who knows, maybe we could see a story pop up around, like, Sensor, like him possibly grabbing a starting position, um, even though he swears he's not sub. Um, or like who, <laughs> who knows what could happen? Um, and and it's great. I know that he's not gonna start. I can tell you that bit now. <laughs> y yeah. Did you hear that? That he's not gonna start. Oh uh, well, no, it's just obvious. Oh okay. All right, fair enough. He's nowhere near as good as any of the people, unless like, I don't know, a touch breaks his like in both of his hands and his fingers are like destroyed. Yeah. That's the only way he's playing. The only, like, who, who are you going to repl replace? The only other thing I could see him was maybe be like, a like an S and D sub. But even then, he's not an S and D player. So no, no, and it don't make any sense to play him. He's there just to bring some awareness to the run. I I agree. I definitely think he was. Um, I think he was signed because of his brand or whatever. He brings a lot of clicks, a lot of interaction, but also, um, he's been friends with Attach and Zuma forever. 
So, old I phase, mean, phase teammates, right? So. Phase up, right? So, it makes sense to go to your friends. Um, and Sensor wasn't exactly in the best position a couple months ago. Um, so, maybe his friends helped him out and went, hey, have a connect, talk to this guy, sell yourself, go from here. Or maybe he did really earn a spot. Who knows? Um, but again, it's storyline. Yeah. And that yeah. means, in, yeah. like, good things for COD. People are interested. Um, but with that comes the game. And I know you originally weren't even going to buy the game, but you did. You bought Modern Warfare. What do you think? What's your thoughts? Because I haven't talked to you about that yet. That I wish I could get a refund. <laughs> no, no, tr tr truthfully, in its current state, it's awful. In my opinion, like, it's, just, it's borderline unplayable unless you're playing Gunfight, which is quite fun. And it'll, smaller maps and such, it eliminates mm -hmm. a lot of the, the bullshit. Uh, so I'm like only playing that at the moment. But um, when the leak came for old maps coming back, so I think it's like Call of Duty 4, Modern yeah. Warfare 2 maps coming, that was kind of the tipping point for me where I was like, okay, if, we, if they're going to bring them back, then um, they're, they're definitely playing up to the nostalgia factor for like older players, I'd say, and and that's going to work. Like just don't tinker with the maps too much and balance the guns while you're doing it. Sort out Dead Silence yeah. and a little bit some bobs there and. It should be all right. People are saying it'll be an excellent, excellent game if they change these little bits and bobs. I, I don't believe that personally, but um, it just depends how much they're willing to change, I guess. But I, I just see it as being an average year. Yeah. Um, Gameplay-wise, at least. Yeah. The the only thing that's really saving this game for me from truly putting it down, like I did with World War Two, like I played a couple weeks of it. I was like, never again. Just go it. Yeah. Hated it. Clever. Um. Yeah, not good. The gut. The like the gunplay feels smooth in this game and it's nice and i feel like that's one of the hardest things to nail down um it feels nice and it feels smooth the only thing that really annoys me um obviously like all we have is pub right now so mm -hmm. it is littered in claymores and the 725 shotguns and like at this point it's a meme it's not even a complaint it's a joke um, well, doesn't it, don't maps have safe spaces or hidden places or something as they're described? Oh yeah, it, infinite places to hide. <laughs> no, that's not what we want. Like it's, it's the kind of thing where they're they're enabling new players to be good or like to get put up good results occasionally straight away. And I, I don't understand the need to cater to new people like that. Part of the draw for me, at least, I, I can't speak up for everybody, but if I pick up a game and I'm not good at it, but I enjoy it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep playing it because because I want to get good. Not because like they're awarding me or like um, assisting me yeah. doing well occasionally. Like I actually want to get good and then and then I'll enjoy it more that way as well because I'm actually destroying people. Where I don't I don't need people camping in a corner with a silenced MP5 and and, and um, claymores. Like it's, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, the thing that confused me was that there was an interview published um, by IGN where there was a developer who stated that the game was developed for the casual players. They wanted to essentially of make course. it easier. And me, I'm I'm just curious about why they would take that stance in a year where they are launching a franchise league that is based around competitive play. Because that's to advertise the, the game. And then the, when people watch it and then they play the game, they want them to be able to have fun and do well straight away. Uh, that's my guess. Because obviously esports is just marketing yeah. for games yeah. anyway. So this is just like the ultimate marketing attempt now. It's like, okay, well, we'll put all of our effort, or as much effort, effort as we're willing to, in, into uh, adv adv advertising it mm -hmm. in a competitive realm. And then people will get it that way and then do well straight away and then they'll keep playing uh, as opposed to anything else. That's, that's how I see it anyway. It's just pure marketing and, and it makes sense because this is their biggest marketing push yet, yeah. uh, esports wise. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, if you see a, a random player named Scump or whatever playing and he pulls off a five piece and you're like, oh, I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. If the if the game caters to that, to maybe where maybe you could do that, I, yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Um, it's shit, but it is what it is. Yeah, I can understand it and disagree with it at the same time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, money makes the world go round. Um, and I believe Modern Warfare, like it, obviously, it's gonna sell millions and millions and millions of units. It's gonna bring in tons of money. Um. But the good thing is that they've already agreed to adjust certain things. Like, I already know they plan on adjusting Claymores. I know they plan on nerfing the 725. So, at least they're listening. 
for, for now, at least. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess I guess they wanted to be successful for the first few months as they launch in the league. Mm-hmm. Cause when's that? January twenty fourth. Yeah. So I mean, keeping it keeping it going until then, and then and then we'll see how active they are. The, the, the test is um, how active they are throughout the year, as opposed to how they are for the first couple of months, in my opinion. Yeah, um, that's true. Especially as they ramp up to advertise the next game. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming mm-hmm. they're going to just release one in October again next year. So when when all the effort starts going towards that one, this will go on the back burner, but the league will presumably still be going. Uh, I don't know uh, how long that's actually going to last. I assume it's going to be a long off season like there is in Overwatch League. Yeah. And maybe at that point they'll just give up entirely and just start on the next game and, and do it all again. Yeah, it's... it's that's the thing. We see the same old, same old in Call of Duty as trends, mm-hmm. where like you you get uh, one month in the game's all right few months in it starts getting a bit boring and then no one cares for the last six months and just mm-hmm. want, wants the next game and we see it over and over and over again so there's no reason to believe it won't be the same this time yeah i mean even with the franchise league or whatever i i agree with you i think next year i think they already said there it's going to be another try art game um so that just means these players are going to have to play again for another say two three four months get to learn the game hop back into the yeah. league have an off-season, learn a new game, it's just going to be a cycle. Yeah, and yeah, that's not too fun to me. Um, but we'll have to see, what, as long as they utilise the storylines and the gameplay's decent, and, and the format's all right, then that, that's fine. But I think that they're going to more uh, try and, and, well, they need to work out how the whole um, home series event's going to work, because we've just seen the prices for london spitfires home games. Oh, since my God, yeah. Now transferring over. And it's astronomical prices. You're paying more... Uh, you pay less for a, like a football season ticket than you do. Yeah, so for, like, somebody say like there's, like there's tickets available for like a thousand dollars or something like yeah. that. It's, it's ridiculous, and, and there's no way that they're gonna significantly lower that for Call of Duty for no reason. Yeah. Right. They're, they're gonna they're, there's gonna be some alignment there or some similarity. So uh, it's, it's I don't know. I think I think they they need to work work on that straight away because if they don't see the attendance they need, then then that. All the effort will go there and other things mm-hmm. will fall by the wayside of it. Yeah, I mean, I went to, um, was it obviously Call of Duty Champs, which is in Florida. I was able to get a press pass, but I bought my boyfriend um, a pass. And it was like, I think it was like 60 bucks or something like that. And it was for a three-day or two-day event, whatever it was. You could go in there, mm-hmm. actually buy swag, sit down, hang out, whatever. Um, and then the Overwatch League Finals was actually in Philly, which is... 20, 30, 40 minute drive for me. Okay. Um, and I was actually going to go, re- regardless of press. I was like, it's in my city. Like, I need to support. It's it, it's my industry. I have to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't even bother looking at press. I was like, I'm just going to pay. I figure it'd be 75 maybe $100 a ticket or whatever. Uh, no, it was like 150 it was it was yeah. it was a lot and that was not for a close seat um if you wanted really really good seats like on the floor or you know where you could actually like not in the nosebleed so to say you were looking at a couple hundred bucks and you especially for like where we were in the city or whatever um i'll say compare it to fortnite world cup fortnite world cup was advertised all over the city there were billboards everywhere um and pretty much everybody knew about it because there was kids walking around with all these Fortnite shirts. Mm-hmm. When it was in Philly, there really wasn't much advertising to where a new potential customer could be there because you just looked at this arena, you're like, to a normal person, it's a video game. You're not going to want to care about it. You're, nobody's mm-hmm. going to understand it. Um, yeah. So I, ho- I hope they're going to be able to bring in more people, more new customers besides the hardcore favorites they're gonna have to really yeah. i don't know I, I, they're still missing about by not making not not charging people uh, to watch online yeah like that, a yeah. lot of money could come that way i don't know why everything could be free online like i i'd happily pay i don't know i don't know how many games is going to be but say um if it was a ten dollars a week or something i had to watch like if it's a game i'm really into and there's quite a few games and stuff like that then i'd happily do it and i assume that would go for other fans as well because fans of sport very happy to pay extra on their like broadband package deals and to get pay-per-view and such so i don't see why esports are so far behind on that yeah i mean blizzcon it was fifty dollars for a virtual ticket you had access to all the different individual streams you got 
I'm gonna say virtual goodies. Like I don't care about them. Um, no. But who knows? Like, hey, buy a virtual ticket for first home stand, and you get twelve unique gun skins for each team, or, or something. Mm. Like that yeah. would definitely entice people. Um, you know, to support because me, like, I'm not flying to go to Minnesota and watch the first like home no. game or whatever. I'll go to New York one, but I'm not flying to every single one. So mm. that means you have a whole new market each event. Um, it's they, gonna be it's tough a, they put a huge investment into this. Um, all of these teams did a minimum mm -hmm. of what was it, 25 million. So. Yeah. They gotta make that money back somehow, and maybe that's gonna be through thousand dollar tickets. <laughs> I hope it's not, but well, I don't think they'll make their money back that way. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will really buy them. No, no, but um, yeah, it's 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 gonna be interesting. As a fan of Call of Duty, I want it to work, but as I, I don't know, I have a bad feeling. As a realist, you have a bad feeling. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> as somebody who's rational. A little yeah. bit, yeah. It's understandable. The thing is that the Overwatch League model isn't proven yet. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. Yeah. Where, where, where like, at the home stand events they have done, um, they've kind of tried to paint it as if they've done well, but have they really? Like, everything I've heard suggests it's not done too well. So it's, it's a massive risk, especially doing it before Overwatch League has proven itself mm -hmm. one way or the other, whether it's, it's successful or not, then just going along and doing it anyway and, and cutting out the, the, two, the two seasons of... Um, just being located in one place. Yeah. Going straight to home and away matches is, is a massive risk. It uh, is. And I, I, yeah, we'll have to just kind of wait and see, though. If I had a lot of money right now to put put down on whether it would work or not, I would say no. I would say in like five years it will be gone. Yeah, unfortunately... Or dramatically different. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I agree with you, and I'm... I, like, I don't know what could change my mind about it obviously like we haven't seen anything yet we don't know what these guys have planned but right now like none of this stuff is screaming to me it it's just e even the game <laughs> even the game is just mm -hmm. lackluster to me and yeah there's millions of dollars on the line and i don't know if investors are okay with lackluster <laughs> um Oh, the, the the people who've invested in Overwatch League already and then Call of Duty, I, I would argue they're fine with Lackluster. But, um, Maybe. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll have to see. And that, that's like 10 out of 12 ownership groups or something, right? Invested yeah. in the CDL. So, I mean, they know what they know what they're getting themselves into for the most part. It's just all promises. Like most things in esports, I guess, at the moment. It's just like in the in the future, everything will be great and yeah. everyone will be rich. Just just hang on for the first two years. It's going to be rough, but after that, it's going to be okay. And who knows? Exactly, yeah. Maybe it will be. Maybe it will be. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but somebody else in the industry who's definitely not the, not right now who isn't okay, um, Faze Jarvis, uh, the 17-year-old kiddo who happened to get himself banned for life from Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, I've made my feelings on this pretty clear um he absolutely knew what he was doing in my opinion um okay. i've watched the whole video from him um okay. it's all i have so you yeah. have a more informed opinion it's, here than me it's it's online it's out there like if you just youtube look up phase jarvis aimbot video like it's there um it's ridiculous can I just clarify, is he, does he compete as well? Or is he strictly, like, um, just a personality? From from what I understand, he was strictly, like, doing content, but playing with some, like, of these esports personalities. So that's where I think Got the it. confusion comes in from him yeah. being competitive. Um, but he's mostly known, obviously, for being in FaZe, but his brother is also in FaZe. FaZe K. So they... Oh, right, okay. I don't even know that bit. Yeah, so they definitely have a connection, and uh, they're well-known. Um, just Jarvis alone on his YouTube. He has over 2 million subscribers. Um, wow. But this video specifically, um, when he posted it, he said, I'm using separate accounts on a separate computer because I know there's a possibility that I am going to be banned. And I'm going to record it and upload it. Yes. <laughs> and I'm doing it because yourself. this would be great content for you guys. And I want to, like, it, it, just, it just blows my mind, the entitlement that this kid has to think that that's okay. 
it, it, it doesn't make too much sense. I, I think um, what, one of the wilder parts for me is just the, the lack of care or ownership, I guess, from FaZe Clan mm-hmm. themselves. You've got, I guess you've got like Banks who, who's going to die for this guy, you know what I mean? Like He's so passionate, apparently, about all this shit. But he only sees it from one side. Like it's, I guess nobody's monitoring the content that's going on, right? Like nobody's uh, obviously nobody uh, necessarily be in charge of content creators. But you you must kind of say, right? Well, hacking and using aimbots and promoting that to people in front of an impression like an impressionable audience yeah. maybe isn't the best thing to do, mate. You know what I mean? Maybe they need some guidelines, or they need a few content managers who's kind of overlooking everything and saying, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. No, don't go smash up a thirty grand hotel room. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't I don't know. Don't go fight in bars. Don't hack. Don't cheat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then at least saying, okay, we 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 respect Epic Games' decision to do this. Um, while while we disagree, like it's your game, you choose, and and we we do not condone any of this. But instead, I haven't seen any of that. I've just seen Banks going on Twitter as he usually does, um, and some really bad takes on Twitter. That's all I've seen. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, it's been a lot of support for him. Everybody thinks that um, one, the lifetime ban is ridiculous. Um, or I'm not gonna say everybody. It's it's really split. It's either people agree with it or they don't agree with it. Um, yeah. me, the lifetime ban, it, his intent was there, and that's mm-hmm. the thing that really ruins it for me. Um for him in this situation anyway like he he knew absolutely what he was doing he used two different accounts and it even shows in the video of him getting banned and going oh no oh no i got banned okay well let's go do it again um oh really i'm gonna have to send you the video it's horrible oh that's that's lifetime it's horrible oh yeah no he's he's he knew and so he recorded this video of i had no idea i could get banned you had no idea then how did you have the knowledge enough to use a different computer <laughs> also i've seen some people saying it's ruining his life is he 17 years old banks was like oh epic ruined his life he's 17 right yes fortnite is like, last time I'm, i was aware fortnite is not the only game in the world <laughs> that exists right no absolutely okay not. and you say he's got two million subscribers mm-hmm. will they be subscribing to him just for fortnite content or the off for the fact that he's Jarvis, because I mean, there's plenty of other Fortnite content out there. Yep. So surely he could play any other game and have a decent audience. This will now fuck things up a bit, but so he's not going to be earning them three million a month. It maybe a million and a half. But it's mm. still not ruined his life. He has not killed anybody. He is not on some sort of register. He just can't play Fortnite. Yep. Like yeah, it's so dramatic and it's so bullshit. Uh, and the fans will get behind it, and public pressure will come, and, and Epic Games will either double down on it entirely, send a message, or they'll go back on it and go, oh, oh you know what, six months. Well, and I, I just hope they double down on it. Well, Epic made a statement to The Sun, um, oh. and they already said, they were like, we have a zero tolerance policy for cheating. It's staying. Oh. So, okay. there it is. It's and I Debate over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's which... it. He's, he's, he's gone against the rules, and they're saying they're not having it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what else we can say. Yeah. Like, he's, he's done something wrong and he's paying the price. Yeah. But he can still make content and make a good living. Oh, so absolutely. I mean, he has that. a second channel with his brother. I don't know how many subscribers it has, but within the past, like, couple uploads or whatever, it's gotten over 50,000 views. They have content on Minecraft that has millions of views. Like, he's fine. He is so fine. <laughs> oh, my God. He is, he is more fine than I am. <laughs> like, it's, it's completely okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, honestly, it's, what it's, he needs to do is take this as a lesson to think about the content you're putting out there, because mm-hmm. you agreed to the term of services when you created that account. Of course. So. Um, so did High Sky. I mean, he was underage. Oh um, yeah. Oh god. Well, uh, so, but I mean, phase are perfect. Oh and, god. And, you know, oh my god. They've got a like, really high valuation, and the revenue is amazing. Nothing's going wrong over there at all. Shout you know? out I mean, Forbes. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not shouting them out. We're not bull. <laughs> Um, it's absolute bollocks. Yeah, that, 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 uh, I was speaking on Twitter about it yesterday in a thread. Um, do you know how many people in those companies sent out an email and was like, so you need to edit our decks to put in these numbers right now? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I, I, oh, oh, I shouldn't say this, but, um, so a source told me, I, I can't say mm-hmm. anything about who they are, um, but that, do you, Organize well. At least one of the organizations themselves submitted those numbers. Oh, I'm sure. I'm so sure. I mean, it's already on the decks. I yeah. don't know how many that applies to, and if 
be true or what. It's just something you kind of hear. Yeah. Um, I tend to believe this person. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's good for esports in a sense because it makes it look healthier than what it is. Uh, and then more investors will come in and then more money that way. So, I mean, it kind of helps. But, I mean, I don't, I don't think lying is the best way to do that. You know? but yeah, that's my, that's my thing behind it, too, is that I don't necessarily, like, I don't see this as a white lie. <laughs> like, those numbers are pretty bumped, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, the multipliers are ridiculous and, and not, not, quite, not standard at all. Yeah, no, it makes no sense how, say, like, the revenue, uh, I think it was, like, one East, one, one of them was, like, $8 million of revenue, but they were worth, like, $120 million. Like, that doesn't really make any sense. No. Um, no, it's like, I, I, I don't even know where the multipliers come from. I guess it's people going, but it's eSports, but it's the next biggest thing. Like, it's going to be worth $73 billion by 2021. And it's, it's those yeah. people and, and that train of thought which makes the multipliers so high, which makes the valuation so inflated. Mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed to being realistic about an actual valuation of where it is now. Yep. It would actually be more helpful to have accurate and honest depiction of where we are as oh, an industry. Great. So, But I don't, we're not going to get that. But, I mean, having having any sort of list from Forbes like this, uh, it, it'll be beneficial as well as detrimental. It, it's, it's, not, it's not a simple topic at all. You could kind of go on about it fair for a long, long time. But yeah, I, 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 there's no way I agree with a lot of the numbers on that list. Yeah, I, I definitely saw people on Twitter, LinkedIn, and all that, like a part of those orgs, saying like, "Hey, you know, look how you know good we did. We're number two, eight, whatever, whatever." Um, but what happens to those real numbers? I guess those are getting buried, and they're being replaced by these other fake numbers that Forbes or Newzu or whoever the hell is publishing. Well, they, they get forgotten about when a 30 mil uh, investment round comes in anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's the yeah. number that people care about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, even in that article, it stated Gen G was the highest one. Uh, they got, I think it was 46 million in one round. Yeah. Well, I, th I think Cloud9 got 50. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, so I, th I think they've had 50. All, all, all liquid. Yeah, um, that Perhaps right, both, right, yeah. but I, I definitely think Cloud9 did in their most recent one. But yeah, so uh, the Gen G one had like Will Smith and a Japanese football player who's really popular, but I don't know his name. Mm -hmm. Like they have incredible investors there, and 100 Thieves obviously have there. Was it 30 oh, yeah. or 35? Um, that, that, and but it's the quality of their investors which stands out to me rather than the actual number. But yeah, those those numbers seem to drown out any other ones anyway. It's like, well, they're they're earning, they're they're raising 30 mil, so they must be doing amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. That's I mean. Not the case. Yeah. I mean, specifically for 100 Thieves, anyway. I mean. I'm a fangirl. I pretty much love everything that they do. I um, hate Hundred Thieves. Oh my so god. <laughs> um, I mean, you accepted your reward in that hat, so it, it's an iconic. Hat. I didn't think I was winning, so <laughs> 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 to be honest, so I didn't really think about. I didn't think that far. Hey, well, it, it is what it is. But um, yeah, their decision to not go into the CDL um, to pick up other teams and also develop their facility and everything. Um, I love that idea. I think it's a, mm -hmm. the smart idea um, because we talked about it earlier. Like, what happens if this Call of Duty League flops like next year or the year after? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not necessarily unrealistic either because leagues have fallen apart. Um, I mean, the PUBG League alone is going through their own whatever. Um, yeah, and obviously I'm the H1 League. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing some stuff about the PUBG leagues, and I don't know, they could all be consolidated, so it's PUBG West oh, okay. at the moment, instead of European, Europe and North America, and it's only had one season. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's only been going for one year, and it's already a state, and obviously, yeah, as you say, you've got the H1Z1 Pro League and such. Mm -hmm. It does happen, they do, they do fall. Yeah, I mean, obviously this one has a bit more money behind it, has a big company behind it, um, but Blizzard, Activision, has not given much confidence in anything really within the past year, for me anyway, um, they just scream money, 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 and that's it, so. That sounds about right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I, th I think 100 Thieves' decision to not get into CDL kind of cemented that uh, Nate Shot surrounded himself with some really clever people. Oh, yeah. That's what made me think they were the real deal, where I was like, okay, they actually could uh, kind of innovate in esports and do, some, do things differently. Oh, yeah, you can see. Which, obviously, a lot of people didn't get into the, into the CDL, but, I mean, mm -hmm. they could have done. Like I, I, I'm pretty sure Activision Blizzard would have like done anything they wanted within reason 
to, to get 100 Thieves in, especially having Nature up there and such, mm-hmm. and already uh, and the run they had in, in this past year. Yeah. So, yeah, them not getting in, I was like, okay, I, I really do like 100 Thieves. Yeah. Except for their, their hat prices and postage <laughs> prices, they're disgusting. Yeah. But, but, the... uh, I got, I have two pieces of their merch or whatever. I have the, uh, what was it, the tricolor hoodie, and I have a jersey that's, like, hanging on my wall. And I have Very never nice. been so, like, stressed out trying to buy a piece of clothing in my life. Their drops, it is... Oh, it's because they're available for, like, three minutes, right? So. Oh, my God, it is insane. Um, But, yeah, they're, they're, they're changing the game, literally, with, with their merch. Um... People like organizations started selling baseball jerseys after them. Like they're they're setting the meta. Oh, hundred yeah. um, percent. And it's just, it just it'll be interesting to see what they do next. Obviously, they've got the star from and and stuff mm-hmm. uh, in their facility when that when that's built next year. Yeah. So and I believe they're gonna do they're gonna probably have like the the basics always on sale and then still do the exclusives, but more more frequently now they've hired Doug Barber. Oh, but it'll be interesting. They can make that yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I don't know how they're gonna keep changing things, and if they can, but I'm interested to see if they do. Because if anyone is going to, I believe it's them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm interested to see what else they do. I mean, there's so many different facilities being built out right now, um, and it seems like these orgs are tra- transitioning. Sorry, from the team house format to where everybody was, you know, buying up these essentially like regular like four five room houses or whatever in the suburbs and just putting these teams in there um like the old mm-hmm. school optic house i believe uh liquid did a house um numerous cod teams did a house last year for the 2019 season um so yeah it seems like facilities are definitely the way to go um these people are transitioning to allow players to have their separate space um you know, I, it makes sense. Yeah, um, I think it's definitely a healthier mindset for these. It's especially when, like uh, Envy and Complexity are doing it. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, we're going to make this the best place possible, so all you have to do is concentrate on winning. Right? And and you don't have to be around your teammates 24-7, and, and, and the chemistry can still be there without actually getting on each other because you're never apart. And mm-hmm. you can have these apartments, you do what you want outside of in your spare time but when you're here it's, it's all business they're treating it like a an actual sport as such and, and i agree with it yeah absolutely i do too um all right well i guess moving on uh our last topic um esports journalism which you recommended um to talk about um as i've said before i've only been in i'm gonna say esports uh for about a year but I followed yeah. it before, so obviously I knew of like some of the outlets, but I was more of a consumer than, say, an employee. Um, okay. And it has been interesting learning different things because, like, for instance, I always read Dexerto um, because Call of Duty fan, the only place to really get your like news and drama on Call of Duty, I'd say four or five years ago-ish, was Dexerto. Um, and then writing for them, it was interesting. Um, it's It was just a completely different, uh, I'm going to say scene, because I came from video game journalism, where it's it's very laid back. Where... Okay, well, it's, it's seemingly a bit of a journalist and esports journalist anyway, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, switching sides, that is a risky move. Yeah, um, it definitely was. Um, but for me, like, I never really meant to land in Fortnite. I never really meant it to be, I'm going to say, my main game of focus. It just kind of, like, Mm -hmm. happened. Um, And now that I'm here, like, Fortnite is, I, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to get a little drained. Um, Just now. You've done very well. Well, that happened to me after about season four. Oh, my God. It's (laughs) just, like, one, you kind of have to play the game to understand it, to write about it, especially to do these guides. Mm-hmm. And with a game that updates literally once a week, um, it it's exhausting, man. Um, I can only imagine. I'd, I'd never try it myself. I'll put it that way. Yeah, it's it, it it's oh, it's hard because the main fan base behind Fortnite is younger. Um, 
And it's a huge freaking fan base. Like, oh my god, I once got into like a brief argument with somebody over Twitter when I was swarmed by like hundreds and I was like, oh, Jesus, okay, sorry, my bad, I didn't know, like, hail Fortnite. Oh. That's almost like an initiation for Ernie's watch. Yeah. You have to get into at least one big fight and, and get raided by a bunch of weirdos. Mm -hmm. It was within my oh, first... Oh, you're not legit. It was my first week at Fortnite Intel, and I saw the comments that was like, you're horrible, you're a piece of shit, how do you not understand the difference between a combat shotgun and a tactical shotgun? And I was like, whoa, okay, this is new. Um, oh, uh, somebody called my mom a hoe today. That was fun. It's just... You just gotta, just like at the end of the day, do they know your mum? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, I know. It's, it's Chances funny, don't, it's so funny, people take things, off. yeah, people take things very in far, but the fans I can deal with, I'm not even a fan, the readers or whatever is interesting, um, the rivalry in esports journalism, um, I really did not know it was a thing, honestly, until I made the switch to Doc. Um, oh, I okay. did not know. Um, it wasn't until, um, it was one of my old co-workers at Dexerto who was like, hey, so did you know? I was like, no, I had no idea. Um, and looking back, I think I would have, I don't want to say necessarily made a different decision, but I would have weighed my options a little bit more. I would have reached out to people, um, and asked questions. Um, okay. because again, I had no idea. I literally thought it was just like, hey, I'm just going out to get another freelance position or whatever. But really in hindsight, it was more like an Adidas employee going to their boss and saying, hey, I'm going to work part-time for Nike. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to work. It, it's a tough one. I mean, it, because, um, uh, not too many, but there are, there are street competitors, right? So mm -hmm. dot do quite a lot of stuff like Dexerto does, but Dexerto also does a lot more than the dot. Yeah. But then also is like eSports Insider and eSports Observer. Yep. And and I guess as um people have tried doing CS content and keeping up with HLTV, but they mm -hmm. can never quite get there. But yeah, yeah. it's just uh, there's, there's a lot going on, and uh, competition's good. It pushes people to be better. Oh, yeah. So I, I I don't mind it myself. Um, I, I'm definitely on. On the side of one, I say it's a friendly rivalry, which is good. Ooh. But we're we're very much covering the exact same stuff. Yeah. So trying to different differentiate yourselves is, is interesting, and it forces you to kind of think outside of the the box and and do things differently. So I don't think it's bad. But yeah, it's, it's definitely I wouldn't say it's necessarily clickish, but mm. um, and everyone's seemingly mostly mostly friends with everyone else, or at least um, they're acquainted and they don't hate each other. But I'd, I'd say there are like um personal kind of rivalries as well which i, I quite enjoy it's, it's quite fun mm -hmm. yeah like uh, the only true i'm gonna say group that i know of that has genuine hate towards them is unfortunately richard lewis and like slasher in them but i think that's because they have established their name and they're so big that honestly the bigger you are the more haters you are going to have generally than say like compared to like you or me or anybody like that. What are you um, trying to say? I'm huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, just famous, man. What? <laughs> UK writer of the year. Um, no, no, no. But what? I, like, so like Richard Lewis got into something. What was it? A couple weeks ago. Um, because of some disagreement with I think it was the Overwatch community or whatever. Um. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't understand where the hate came from. Um, I read his article that he published on Dexerto about it. And I don't know if I could ever handle that. Having hundreds of people coming at me for several days over a topic that they don't necessarily understand. Um, oh, I, I could. <laughs> I would love that. Um, yeah. I, I just see Twitter as a game, you see. I, I, don't, I don't take things personally because it's you can switch yourself off from that and it's you're never going to mm -hmm. notice it and it's never going to affect you so I, I don't know i just I, if, especially if you know they're uneducated and don't know what they're on about and yeah. they're talking absolute shite then why it's not it's not going to bother me i've, I've had uh, a fair few um kind of spats on twitter which i probably shouldn't engage in because the people are all irrelevant i don't even know who they are i couldn't yeah. even name them now but like uh, i don't know I, I think it depends on your personality type if, if you're if you're quite 
I, I guess I'd say sensitive to, to those kind of things, mm -hmm. and then then it's difficult because I mean you you wanna you wanna challenge people and you wanna put thoughts out there and such, but if you know you're gonna be met with such a big backlash and you're not particularly great at handling it, then that could be rather discouraging. Yeah, I, and that is definitely me to an extent. Um, there's some things where like. For instance, if like I write a news article about Fortnite where I'm like they add in yada yada gun and then random person, hey, you suck at writing. Like I don't care, dude. It's a it's an article that is paying my bills. I know it's right. It is what it is. Move on, move on with your day. Um, mm -hmm. But like when I posted my first infinite story and that really like blew up and people started noticing, um, I was scared because I never in my life truly gambled on myself like that mm -hmm. and i still to this day stand behind it i trust my sources um but at story honestly like probably shouldn't have been published um why, why would you say that one i didn't really have anybody edit it i had like a personal friend of mine that i trusted within the industry like hey can you look this over make sure it's okay um, but I had a couple outlets turn it down. Um, and the reason for that was because my source didn't want to be revealed. Um, even to okay. my, even to my editors, um, like Dexerto, they didn't want it because I couldn't give up my source. And because this was my first true story that I really felt passionate about, I was not necessarily scared, but I was very protective. Okay. Um, of this source because they were taking a chance on me and if they were taking a chance on me I wanted to make sure I was given the same respect back to them. Of course, yeah. At, at the end of the day, like, if, if real sensitive source where if, if that yeah. gets out, it can ruin things like you'd rather not go with the story than compromise them, right? Yeah, and... Well, so, so you did the right thing by self-publishing, I believe. Yeah, I... Like... It's, it's if you're a, happy with the story, at least. Yeah, no, I, I am. And the reason, the I want to I wanna say, like, the last thing that truly, like, pushed me to do it was that I was talking to people within Infinite. And mm -hmm. they had no idea what was going on. They had no mm -hmm. idea they were about to lose their jobs. They had no idea yeah. that they were essentially just, like, just sitting there. And yeah, I that's felt exactly why bad. I, was on it too. I felt bad. Um, mm -hmm. Because I've been there. I've been in that situation where I've sat there and I thought everything was okay, but really in the background, they're planning my resignation letter. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I always agreed to stand by myself when I first started journalism like five years ago, that if something makes you uncomfortable and if something, if you would want somebody to do something for you and you have the opportunity to do it, like, why not? Like, for instance, if somebody, say, a couple months down the line, I'm with an outlet, and they're like, hey, Amanda, just to let you know, like, um, they're probably closing their doors. If I go to my boss and they're like, hey, no, 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 everything's fine. I'd, like, it's, it's good to look out for people. Good karma and things like that. And that's really what it was. And I did have people come up to me and go, I had no idea. Thank you. Um, and that's what made it worth it. Um, that particular time that I published it wasn't great for me and my personal life because I had yeah. like personal family things going on. So I couldn't, it, it was such a difficult situation because I wanted to comment, but I had such bigger things going on. And then you have me going in the optic discord <laughs> saying it's bullshit. And then the next day or whatever, ending up on the ruish. Mm -hmm. December, like completely dissecting it with the parts I agree on. I was like, who the hell is this Adam Fitch with. dude going like, who like why is like why is he talking about me? But then, like again, like we talked about it. I mm -hmm. had to sit back and I was like, dude, honestly, if somebody came up to me and was like, hey, so I have a story and it proves everything you said was wrong. Like, yeah, I feel some sort of way too. <laughs> and I was a new person. Uh, I really, like, really didn't have a name for myself, especially in Call of Duty. If there was any scene I was established in, it was Fortnite. Um, so, understood it. But Yeah, it, it's strange, uh, yeah, because I, I was reporting the whole Infinite situation too, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just, um, 
my so as you are, we all source like I I had a fair few sources that I like wholeheartedly believed in, even mm. though there was a limited pool pool of people who would know what's going on, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 they and they were all adamant that what you had heard was was different from what what they perceived to be reality as such. Yeah. So I I felt like it was kind of my duty to go out and 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 dispel what I believe was absolutely correct information, right? And and no, it, it wasn't me talking about you as much as it was me talking about the information in the article. And it is it it was good to establish that it wasn't anything personal. It was just it, yeah. all it is is just trying to tell the truth, right? And oh and yeah, and, and, and that's the thing also that that is literally your job to do that. To if there is an article out there potentially spreading fake news, it is your job to disprove that. Um, so that means I was being held accountable. The scene was being held accountable, and that's a good thing. I wow. like to this day I don't take it personal. Like obviously you're on this podcast, <laughs> like it's it's True. fine, and um, I'm completely okay with being held accountable. And um, I, all I want to do is I want to learn. And I just want to make sure that I'm doing good by this industry because so far, um, I feel like it's done me well. And that's really it. Um, I, I wish I had another like lead like that to push or whatever. Um, admittedly, after like that came out, I was like, well, I'm gonna like step back for a minute and retrace my steps. But now, like, I definitely it was a learning experience, and it was a great learning experience. Um, and like I got to meet new people like you and things like that from it. Um, I just I'm hope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like honestly, we both are because not many situations like how that turned out, where somebody's coming at you and saying, "No, you're absolutely wrong," turns into a positive, <laughs> especially in 2019. Yeah. Well, it helps that we're both at least a slight bit mature so yeah. we can actually have a discussion around it so we spoke privately around the time of it happening mm -hmm. i don't remember exactly now it was a few months ago and no, I can't you, you, it got, yesterday. you dm me you were like hey just to let you know like uh my sources told me no and i was like oh, this asshole all right uh, uh, <laughs> even though we get on now i am still an asshole <laughs> i stop that to everybody watching i am an asshole i can accept that completely like i i'm fine with it but hey. I, I try to be a good ass. That sounds weird. Just a good person who is also an ass. I know. Like, I know what you like do. I, I, I may, I may be an ass, but I do things for the right. You had, reason. you had, the, you had good intentions. You had good intentions. Almost and... always, I do. <laughs> Almost always. Yeah, but um, yeah, man. It, it, again, like I learned a lot. I got to meet a lot of great people, and not only that, like I got to speak to different journalists and like learn about their different experiences about writing articles and things like that and um it's always great to network that's that's really the big thing for me is i just want to meet new people and form new experiences and i definitely made one for myself <laughs> well that's how you you get more information as well right mm -hmm. oh, by networking and such so it's it, especially in esports i assume it's the same in most other industries yeah. really but it, it is definitely about who you know mm, absolutely. um and just while we're on the topic of esports journalism, I just want to say, fuck any publication that is publishing a lot of articles with no editor. You uh, are doing things entirely wrong. You are setting a bad example. Like I, I, I don't agree with what you're doing, especially when you have the money you're posting about how well you're doing, but you're not putting that money into an editor, which could help you do any better. Yeah. And it could help prop other people up in the scene, uh, perhaps let people progress into an editor role or to bring outside editors into esports, which mm -hmm. will help esports as well. Like, nah, I don't stand with that stuff. Yeah. Don't like it at all. Yeah, there's don't like been, it at all. there's, so it's, I've had one website that I wrote for that I felt like the editor was extremely strict. Like every single word and every single phrase was looked over and forked through. And they told you, you know, well, no, this is too many words. So you need to rephrase it this way. But I know, every single time I will take that over having somebody looking at my document and me knowing that there's like mistakes in there and they could be fixed and the person going nope looks good yeah um it it's exactly. it's an insult because honestly like the writer could be learning and doing things better the editor could be learning doing things better learning about leadership 
how to mm-hmm. establish, you know, constructive criticism and things like that. Um, I had that over at Dexerta with one of my editors. Um, he was always like, hey, like, you're doing good, but just to let you know, you could do the constructive criticism, which is how it should mm-hmm. be. Um, I dish that out on a daily over at Esports Insider. Yeah. If you ask them, they'll probably be sick of me, just uh, constantly little bits and bobs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't see the benefits of not having an editor besides saving a, a bit of money. It's literally yeah. just to save cash. I really think that's what it is. Piss poor. Yeah, no, Piss I poor. don't I don't agree with it. It's pretty much just like walking into any type of store or business and they don't have a manager. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, you are just leaving way too much of an opportunity for something to slip through. And yeah. oh, I, oh, by the way, I'm talking about Gfinity. I, I'm not scared of saying it, by the way. Just put that out there. I realize <laughs> I haven't actually said who it is. I'm thinking about Gfinity. I, th- I think uh, I like uh, some of the writers there. Mm-hmm. Some I don't. But the fact that I don't have an editor, which I've kind of been public about before on Twitter, I've spoken quite publicly. Mm-hmm. And I've also spoken privately about it with people as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm under the impression that an editor would be brought in at some point. And they're achieving record numbers, and they obviously think it's fine to not have one. Just thought I'd uh, put that out That's, there quickly. Yeah, I mean, I wrote for them once. Um, I mean, it, it oh, was... A, fuck you, man. It was a nah, super nah. brief... Like, it was Rocket League. I, I did... I covered Rocket League for them. It was super brief. Like, I did a couple interviews, handed them off, and, and that was pretty much it. Um, I don't believe... There probably wasn't an editor, from what I know. Like, from when I compared no, Chris it... Trout was all. Yeah, it was pretty much the same thing that was in my Google Doc to whatever. But, um, yeah, no, I'm talking to a website now, and it seems like their plan is that they want to hire people, um, kind of, quote-unquote, train them up, and then give them editor roles. But I It depends on the people been... doing the training. Yeah, I haven't seen too many websites actually lived up to that promise. Um, usually when I've seen that, it's people who are writing, and then they try to work to that position, and then they're usually let go. So, like, they're given mm-hmm. a false promise. Um, yeah. I don't know. What you're saying is I'm going to be let go by ESI. I, dude, I hope not. They just, like, they gave you a nice birthday post and everything. <laughs> I have to do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, no, I joke about that. No, um, no, it's just um, it's it's just it's just a strange thing to be in. I think a lot of the 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 writers kind of started from a place of passion in mm. in esports because they they enjoy the game, so they want to write about them, which absolutely. is absolutely. Um, but that means they've got kind of a lot of the time no actual formal experience in journalism or education in it. Saying I have no journalistic education at all, but I, mm. I do what I can to learn. I've got a bunch of books over there. You know, what I mean, uh and just learn on the job, which is a good way of doing things. Whereas I think would really benefit from having, um, say, sports journalists come over mm-hmm. uh, and um, operate an esports and show everyone how to do it. Though I do also think we're in a decent spot of content creation. I just think, it, as always, you can, it, things can be better. Yeah, like I believe Dexerto hired um, their new editor-in-chief is from Red Bull. Um, yeah, Tommy. Yeah. He was at Red Bull UK, yeah. Yep. Um, so... Yeah, like different things like that. Um, I'm also seeing some companies hire from like traditional like NFL, MLB, things like that. Um, but yeah, like I'm the same. I don't really have any formal training. Um, I'm like halfway through my bachelor's, but that's not even for journalism. It's for internet right. marketing. <laughs> okay. Um, so all of my journalism like experience, uh, it's either been taught to me from editors or I've gone out and I've had to learn it on my own. Either through buying books, researching, you know, talking mm-hmm. to like journalists like you, things like that. Um, so even then, like it's weird when you know people ask me what I do, and I'll say I'm an esports journalist. I feel a little guilty because I'm more like a self-titled esports journalist. I don't really have any special credentials besides I've written for these sites A, B, and C. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think that means anybody can really become whatever they want to be. Um, In a sense, but then they have to. Then you have to remember that not everybody is good at everything. Oh, pff, t- t- tell me about that. I know. So, so you, you get some people who, yeah, believe that. Oh, I, I can do anything, which is a great mindset to have. But you also have to be realistic with yourself and, and so cut your losses sometimes when you realise, okay, yeah, I still don't understand the different types of there. Yeah. Um, I probably shouldn't be a journalist. I should probably shouldn't be writing at least. You know. Or, yeah. 
can't, can't seem to keep things off record when they are off record or I'm not very good at networking, I can't uh, get connections or anything like that. You kind of need to be realistic about things. Like, I know I'm not going to be a basketballer. I'm like 5'10", 5'11", or something. Uh, you know what that's I mean? I'm not, I'm not out there hooping in my back garden right now. Yeah, no, you know, you know that's I mean? true. So, I, w- you, I wish... You have to be realistic about things, and I, th- I think there are a few people. I, I can't... I don't know. There are people, but I'll try and be a bit nice. Uh, <laughs> where where, the, where it's, just not, it's just not for them. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... I'll... I'll say it because the website isn't even existent anymore. Um, the one website I used to do like video game slash esports journalism for, um, official RTV. Um, it was. Never this, even heard of them. It's fine. It's completely fine. I'll be honest. I'm um, sorry. But... No, 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 no. Please, it's fine. Um, and I was like, I fought for a title, and I was given lead gaming editor, and I really wasn't. I had no credentials to be an editor. But they gave it to me, and I was like, all right, dope. I have a title. This is awesome. So I was the only writer, but I was also the editor. So I went over all of my work. But (laughs) the owner told me when I was posting, say, like, news stories, when there was a new press release or whatever, that I wasn't to write anything. It was literally just copy and paste from the press release that I got in my email. Whoa. I'm not even kidding. it's, It's horrible. It's horrible horrible and I went and I made I, I thought it was okay I had no idea and it wasn't until I left and I picked up a book because uh, what was it it was actually the I think it was AP guide to journalism in like 2016 like the thick book or whatever I read mm-hmm. that and I was like oh <laughs> uh, wow I could have been blacklisted from this entire industry from that and I'm lucky I didn't and that's probably because it was a small website for good reason. Um, yeah, so but that's a, yeah, wrong. yeah. No, it was not like I really everything I learned from there was wrong. It was just completely wrong. Um, and then I knew I was like, all right, I need to actually learn because clearly what was being taught to me was not right. Um, mm-hmm. And so far, like knock on wood, I haven't had anywhere in esports that has given me such a wrong direction like that. <laughs> well, that's good, and ho- hopefully it stays that way. You yeah. know, because I, I, I don't know, it's, it's not perfect, but I mean, it's, it's not too bad. The state of it is it, decent. Yeah. You know, we've just we've got a, uh, ownership of companies need to stay out of the editorial side of things mm-hmm. and let the people know what they're doing. Yeah. Do, like, do pay things, you know. Um, and that seems to be the case most of the time. So uh, it, it could be in a worse spot anyway. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely. Um, from what I've seen, like for instance, um, in video in the video game industry, I had a horrible time getting paid. Um, I would rarely get paid on time. Now in here in esports, again, knock on wood, I've been getting paid on time. And there have been so many horror stories of people not getting paid or never getting paid or mm-hmm. like, as we know from numerous orgs, so hopefully things are, you know, taking a positive, you know, path, so to say. Yeah, well, just in the past um, couple of months, I left Star Ladder, right? So I was writing mm-hmm. uh, freelance PUBG esports content for Star Ladder for yeah. the PUBG Europe League, and um, they were habitually late with payments. So oh, I, I, it was I, I would. I would kind of uh, go on strike until they paid me, and then I'd produce what they wanted again until they paid me. And then I found out that uh, staff weren't always paid on time, actual staff, not just oh, freelancers, wow. but staff, um, because a price book were being paid, for example. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, so I, I once I realized things would never get better, I kind of gave them my mate, and, like, you just have to pay me on time or, or I'm Audi. Yeah. And, um, and I'm not there anymore, I'll put it that way. So. <laughs> Uh, and then there was one time with BP Esports as well. Uh, um, mm, yeah. In in kind of V1 of that. We're now in like V2 of BP Esports. Yeah. But back, uh, last year, I think it was. Or, or very early this year. Okay. Um, okay. But I did, I, I did a one off freelance piece, invoiced, didn't get paid. Sent a message to the editor, Kevin Hitt. Yeah. Um, no response. And then I leave it for a little bit. Then I go on Twitter, talk about it. Then I get paid. And you suddenly like, paid. Funny how that works. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, I don't know where to place the blame on that. I don't know if it's because it was a one-off thing or, or just um, the communication mm-hmm. wasn't the best, the best or what what it was. But 
I've, I've had a couple of experiences, but nothing nothing too major, fortunately. Yeah, like, I have like I was speaking to one writer. I'm obviously not going to, like, put his stuff out there, but he said, like, there was one outlet that owed him, like, thousands of dollars. And I was like, dude, one, first off, God bless you that you can afford to have thousands of dollars owed to you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> you're like, okay. Um, second off, why are you still writing for them? Because he, right. he was still he's actively still writing for them. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, they'll pay me eventually. I'm like, you must have some of the best faith in this world <laughs> because... Also wealthy parents. Yeah, like, I don't... And, like, I checked with him a couple of weeks ago. He's like, no, nah, but I'll get it. I'm like, that not going to happen, but whatever. Mm. Legal um, action at that point, right? Yeah, honestly, yeah. That that's almost passing the point of small claims court, thousands of dollars. That's insane. Yeah, I, I, w- I would give up way before that point. Yeah, no, I, it gets to the point where I'm like, you owe me twenty dollars. Um, excuse oh, me. Without <laughs> yeah, you owe me three minutes of my time back. Right? Right. Give me it now. Like, I, I've I've got no tolerance to that stuff now. If you're willing to take me on pay me right yeah uh, that's how i look at it and because uh, i do freelance on the side mm-hmm. stuff but it's, it's just only at, at dicks right now and they are spot on for, for paying so oh yeah they're no great they, that's one thing i'll definitely say they it was like pretty much the day you would send your invoice they were great mm-hmm. um true yeah so all right well we have been going for like an hour and 20 minutes so oh really yeah <laughs> sorry no I'm no no sorry. that's great I, I was actually like i was kind of worried we would be like under like have not have enough topics but this was great we kind of roamed around i I could talk about nothing for (laughs) at least 36 hours so we're safe on that for next time then but uh (laughs) yeah i appreciate it for you coming on for uh episode number nine um getting the ball rolling again i appreciate it um, no, no worries. Thank you for inviting me on. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, you know, you can get something going for yourself, or you could go on those podcasts that you get invited to, or appear on TV. All those big, great plans. Uh, <laughs> Scrunching uh, your I'd face. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna start my own again at some point. Okay. Um, I've just I've got some things to get in in order first for that, mm-hmm. really. But I do plan on doing something. I guess more on the business side of stuff. That seems to be my wheelhouse, and there seems to be a gap for that. Yeah. Oh so yeah, absolutely. Be something there. Um, there'll be plenty of swearing and plenty of opinions that people probably don't like, <laughs> but that, that's all I have to offer. Hey, down for <laughs> it. Gets the impressions. There we go. But uh, all right. Well, again, thank you very much for coming on. Um, if you guys are interested in chatting with Adam, you can follow him on Twitter at by Adam Fitch. It's right underneath his uh, webcam down there. Um, I'll also include links to things that we discussed down below. Um, and again, I will see you guys next time. Have a great night.